In this second episode of Blackfinger Garage, I wanted to talk a little bit about my truck, septic tank. It started life as a 1984 Nissan 720 4x4 pickup, and it's, uh, it's probably about uh, maybe 80-85% done. I hope to get it done before Wasteland Weekend. This is the septic tank. It, uh, it started out like this. You can see it was just a, just like a blue, normal, you know, kind of a off-road truck that people used. I actually got it on a trade. Uh, I had this old flatbed trailer that was just a hunk of junk. And it had those, uh, you know, those trailer wheels, the lugs kind of going funny. I hated it. So I traded it to a guy, a local guy down the road. So what I did was I got some new wheels for it. First thing I did, these new wheels, all four of them, these super swampers with the rims. And actually the main reason I wanted them was for that rim. And it was 200 bucks, 200 bucks for all of those. Um, I got all four of them matching, but those tires have actually held up for a few years. They've been great. So the first thing I did to this thing when I first got it was I painted it black. I got rid of that blue. I did tractor paint. Then I threw on some flat black uh, rattle can spray paint. And uh, it, it came out I mean, it, it, it lasted for two years before I started doing this to it. Of course, what I did to this, to get this beautiful finish you see here, which is genuine rust, it's not paint, is I took this hood off, I took this fender off right here, and I took off this valance, a couple other little pieces here and there. Look at that. Genuine crust. And uh, I took all that off. And I threw it in a bonfire. I threw it in a bonfire right out there in the yard. And it worked great. I love the way, what it did is it, it burned the coating off. You know, it burned the paint off, it, bur it burned it down to the bare metal. And then I got it wet. I sprayed some uh, vinegar, salt, peroxide mix on there. And uh, it rusted up pretty well. And then I just left it outside, you know, kind of let mother nature take its course. And uh, I think it turned out really well. Of course, I cut out uh, some of the wheel wells here. You know, I threw on some some other scrap metal here. But then after that, you know, I, I kind of went nuts on it. I, I took all the windows out. I took all the uh, all the goodies that would make it street legal, of course. I took out, took the seats out. I took the fender's skins off. First, I cut two feet off the back. So it's a, it's a shorter stance. Uh, a lot of rock crawlers do that anyway. And I love this so much more. Uh, I took the skins off, and the skin is actually right here. This door panel is the reversed skin. Uh, I just turned it upside down. That's the inside of the skin that you can see there. And then the other side of the skin is right there. Uh, natural. Oh, natural. And uh, I, I really liked it. I really liked the way that came out. It's authentic. It's real rust. And I, I absolutely love it. And I, I thought the squared off back was too too boxy so i cut this down like this to make it i, I just like that angle a lot better i, th I thought that looked a uh, little more raider-ish i guess so then i started t i you know i had this idea for this I, I wanted to make it um gritty and and rusty and something that would be very gross i mean i wanted to go for gross hey speaking of gross hey dusty what are you doing you want to go for a ride uh, he loves this truck. Uh, so I want to do something gross. And so I started hanging all this fabric off here. I'd rip sheets apart. I, I dyed them in oil and I dyed them in, uh, in like transmission fluid and, and all these fluids that, you know, this, this is supposed to be a, a mechanics truck. This is a, this is a working truck. So I, I dyed everything in those kind of fluids, tied them on little by little everywhere I could. Some of them are actually coming off. You can see these are supposed to be hanging down, but uh, driving it too much, they, they tend to fly up in here. But, you know, that's a kind of naturally where they go, and I love the way it's all just kind of tangled together like, a, like knotty hair or something like that. I did these flags up here, and these flags are, are, are made up of shop rags. Again, these are shop rags that are, <laughs> they got all tangled together but I wanted to do something that was uh, very reminiscent of what a mechanic would have lying around, you know? And uh, 
so I kept the bed, the bottom of the bed here. This is actually a, a rust-free truck, <laughs> which might make some people angry. It uh, started out really rust-free. It has one spot of rust in the floorboard. So I, from there, I started just bolting on, uh, you know, m rusty metal sheets. I did this to kind of cover up. There's a, uh, a pattern from this natural, uh, you know, when you take the fender off, it has this pattern there. It's like holes, and it just looked really, it looked too modern. It was kind of like this right here, but it was everywhere. So I put that patch up there to make it look more, um, you know, patched together. So I built these frames. Let's see, I got a, I don't know if you'll be able to see this. Got my very high tech latching system here, which is a pin. And uh, just, a, you know, these cabinet latches go straight into the old, the old latch right here. Uh, but what this is, is it's just a really rudimentary frame I made. And then I, I, welded and bolted all this sheet metal on there. You can see the inside here of this fender is actually used to be the outside fender, but it all works. You know, I, I tied it into the hinges here so that it would work and it would stay open like doors do. Once it gets past a certain point, it stays open. I wanted to save that. Um, and these bullet holes have kind of a cool story. Uh, I bought this truck and you saw the the condition of it in the in it's all of its blue glory no idea that it had bullet ho bullet holes in it uh the title was bad which is another reason why i decided to do this with it but uh, since the title was bad i imagine someone shot it up <laughs> these bullet holes i didn't see until i took stuff off and then i started seeing all this bondo that i would actually poke out from the other side and I, i'm poking out all these bullet holes i'm finding more and more of them as I'm removing uh, body parts, I see them underneath, so I start poking them through, and I think they look great. On the outside, I mean, sure, they come through, which looks like someone shot it from the other side, but who knows? Could have a story. So they could have had it open like this and, you know, shot it up or whatever. But all of these bullet holes you see in here, including these, there are some, there's actually some in the seats. Uh, it's all, all original, from the original owner before me. Whatever he was into, no idea. Right here is was on the truck when I bought it, and I uh, I put these guards on there for the originally for the headlights. I was going to save the headlights, but I didn't like the way they look, so I went ahead and I took those out. I think it looks so much cleaner. Not that I want this truck to look clean, but you know what I mean, uh, more streamlined. And then these, of course, work. So these are my headlights now, and it's not like I'm going to be driving these on the highway. Uh, this truck on the highway, it's just uh, you know when I do a little bit of. Uh, nighttime wastelanding. I think it's perfect. I do want to add more lights, but the thing is, I do not want to add brand new light bars or anything like that. I think those things are ridiculous for, I mean, they're great for Jeeps, you know, or whatever you want to put them on for your off road adventures, but not for a wasteland car. That is for sure. This hood scoop right here, I caught some flack for this because uh, I figured it would look like something that people would use in the apocalypse as a hood scoop which of course is, you know, in its former life, it was a muffler. Uh, but a lot of people are like, is that seriously a muffler, muffler you're trying to pass off as a hood scoop? Well, yeah, but I'm not trying to hide the fact that it's a muffler. Um, underneath here are some, is actually another muffler from a lawnmower down there. And I just kind of welded that all together. I don't know, that's kind of my least favorite part of the vehicle. What I might do is I might actually cut this out and build something uh, to make it look like it's actually inside, you know, instead of just bolted on, which is fairly obvious right now. So that's a, that's a possibility. This window here, this is a uh, set of cattle panels that I welded on. Um, kind of rudimentary right now, uh, just a, a makeshift thing that I was doing to protect, you know, protect the, uh, the driver. But I'm probably going to put some panels on here. Uh, not too much to, to block my view and everything, but just little bit probably at least up here get some metal straight across and then probably something over here is kind of like a rain guard type of thing you know how they do not that i'm afraid of rain but i thought it'd be cool um these this is something i wanted to do since the very beginning i love wrapped stuff i don't know what it is i have uh, my my go-kart mini nuke is wrapped up like that and uh, it's just something i want to do i really like the way it looks it's like something where if you're if you're riding on the side of this thing you're going to grab on here and you know, you don't want to get your your hands cut up and your manicure ruined, right? So this is the, the driver's side and more metal, more scrapped together metal. You know, it's all pretty much 
this is all stuff I found. You know, there's no brand new parts here. This is a piece of my barn roof, actually, from the barn in the backyard. That is down there, too. This, again, is the inner fender from this side. Now, this logo right here, uh, a lot of people have asked me about that. That is a Silverman, which is a part of the Farlander lore. And so this is kind of the unofficial first marked vehicle of the Farlanders. Uh, it's not the first vehicle of the Farlanders because we have, you know, the Razor Nova and the Mercedes last year was, uh, was kind of in the, in that Farlander, uh, you know, in the camp and everything. But this is the first marked Farlander vehicle. Um, if you're not in the lore, I apologize. I'm a huge nerd. So there's that. This here is my rear bumper slash step slash seat. Um, you can get up pretty easily just step right up on it and then you takes you right up here and of course there's going to be someone in the turret right there you have a light that moves around for backwards frontwards wherever you want to do this does work um, and for the sake of getting away from symmetry which i do not like when everything is exactly the same i just took one uh, put one up here i will probably put another mismatched one over here then of course back here we have our gas cans uh, which it, I'm sure there's a brand new strap holding them in, but I needed that when I went to Aftermath. I still got that on there. But uh, I want to mount those cans somewhere for right now. They're just kind of sitting back there doing their thing, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, this barrel right here that you see is um, a half barrel. You go right in there and you can step. Let's see if I can do it. Ooh. Show you a little bit. Go up here. It's got a little rear facing window and you turn around and you're in the turret spot put the barrel up here just out of one bolt these little guys were on it when I bought it. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the guy who put bullet holes in it liked skulls, so it's okay in my book. And then back here, since it's a king cab, which is like an extended cab, it has some extra room back here for some storage, uh, for maybe another rider who wants to sit there. That is actually, can act like a seat too. You want to sit right in there uh, before, you know, standing up in the turret spot. So there's space for a couple people in here, maybe not comfortably, but you know, it's the wasteland. I also added these spikes here. Now these are metal, they can hurt. I did kind of grind them down a little bit here on the very tip because I didn't want anyone to, well, I didn't want my kids to die. That's probably the main thing. Uh, anyone else, you know, they can die if they want to. But this is, uh, I, I wanted to make it look like bamboo poles, you know, and I wanted to wrap it very primitive, which is the, the look for the whole vehicle that I was going for. So, uh, so you know, primitive bamboo uh, shoots that are, act as spikes if someone tries to climb up you know they get impaled on these and things like that uh, i might do a little bit more with this i'm not sure i like uh, i love rusty chains so i might do some more rusty chains hooks things like that you know let them dangle around i love that kind of stuff um, but we will see we'll see if i just leave this alone or not i don't like these turn signals i'll probably take these out because i'm not going to be indicating uh, any turns in the wasteland the engine is a 2.4 uh, Z, it's actually a, a Z24 engine. Um, it's a uh, carbureted and most of the emission stuff has all been taken off by the previous owner, um, which I am so thankful for. And then I had to do a few little wasteland plug ups. He had some, uh, some vacuum hoses that weren't plugged up and it was running a little funny. And so I plugged those up and tuned the carburetor and it works great. Uh, do I have plans for any kind of hot rod uh, advancements on this i would say no not on this thing it's a four cylinder these little engines have uh actually have eight spark plugs but they're four cylinders uh some kind of thing that nissan decided they were going to try to do uh, you know two two spark plugs per cylinder um it's it's worn out you know i don't know how many miles it has on it i think the odometer says 200 and something but it might be more than that uh it's a good engine though these are these are really good engines that run for a long time Currently, I have no problems with it, uh, knock on metal, but uh, we'll see. What I'd like to do, of course, is put a bigger engine in here, something that doesn't sound like a, 
like a go-kart when you drive it, you know, with the with the cut-off cut off exhaust. I don't know about a V8. V8s, I would have to change the suspension. Uh, it's, got, it's a four-wheel drive, and the transfer case would probably get in the way. It's got kind of a screwy front axle. So, but I am reading up on it. I'm, I'm figuring out how the, the best way to do it and how people have done it in the past. You know, they'll put like 350s or a 302 in there if you want to go the Ford route. So I don't know. I'm going to see if it's worth it because it would be a lot of change. I would probably have to get rid of four-wheel drive, which I don't think I want to do. I really love four-wheel drive in this thing. But right now it runs and it, it does its job, uh, which is all I could ask for. The exhaust has been cut off right here. Um, when I bought the truck, there was an exhaust pipe that went up through there and up through the bed, which was kind of ridiculous. Uh, I guess they were trying to make like a, a rear stack or something like that. Actually sounded like crap. So what I'm going to do, my plan for this, is to run that pipe out, up over in through here, and out the side. Maybe I'll do some dual, you know, a couple, couple lines coming out and do a very Fury Road looking uh, exhaust that, you know, comes all the way out here, sticks up here. Uh, the only thing with that is it's only one, you know, since it's a, it's a four cylinder and it has exhaust, exhaust manifold only on one side. It might look funny with just the one set of exhaust, but I think it'll look better than it does now, which is nothing. And just a, you know, a cut off exhaust that sounds like a go-kart. Mm -hmm. 